Hi guys, this is my first video on YouTube and today we are talking about organization and expression of immunoglobulin genes. So we are basically going to talk about how antibodies are produced. If we think about a general protein, a simple one, let's say hemoglobin. A hemoglobin is made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains. So let's say this black one is our alpha chain and this, um, sorry, this black circle is our alpha chain and this black square is our beta chains. So how this will be produced is that in our cell, we will have two, we'll have an alpha gene and we'll have a beta gene. So this alpha gene would make alpha protein, this beta gene would make beta protein and this thing would happen twice to make two alpha proteins and two beta proteins and they go to endoplasmic reticulum where they combine to make up a hemoglobin now for antibodies we could think that this is our antibody and we these are our heavy chains and this is our light chains so and here the two heavy chains in any antibody they are identical and two light chains they are identical too so you could think that in our body cells we have let's say a gene that codes for heavy chain and gene that codes for light chain and this heavy chain let's say it makes it protein twice to make two heavy chains and it makes the light chain gene makes up light chain protein two times and these two combine to make a antibody this is called germ line theory i write it down germ line theory and this used to be one of the theories that used to account for how antibodies are produced and this is not correct and we'll see after some time why this is not correct and how this actually happens before we do that i'm going to talk about structure of antibodies so let's talk about structure of antibodies for some time So this is how our antibody looks like and like I told before these two are our heavy chains and these two are our light chains and they are combined by disulfide bridges if you guys don't know what disulfide bridge is you guys could look it up on Google and I don't know how many actual number but this is how our antibody looks like and this top part of the antibody this is what binds to the antigen and these are called variable regions so for this light chain this top part is called variable region of light chain or VL and for this part we would call it V as variable region of heavy chain same goes on this side now this remaining part of light chain we call it CL, C is for constant, part of light chain, and same goes for heavy chain, so for heavy chain, maybe from here all the way up to here, we call it constant region of heavy chain. And based on constant region of heavy chain, antibodies are divided into five different types. So we have IgA, IgZ, IgD, IgE, and IgM, and these different type of antibodies they are also called isotypes. They are right here, and these different isotypes they differ in their constant region of their heavy chain. <coughs> so, if an antibody has the constant region alpha it's called IgA if it has constant region gamma of heavy chain it's called IgZ if it's delta it's called D if it's epsilon it's called E and if it's mu it's called M and this constant heavy chain alpha it has two different sub isotypes it has alpha 1 and alpha 2 Oops.
so alpha has alpha 1 and alpha 2 and gamma has four different sub-isotypes gamma 1, 2, 3, 4 so that makes up IgG1, IgG2, IgG3 and IgG4 the IgD, IgE and IgM they don't have any sub-isotypes in the same way the constant region of light scene there's two different type of constant region one is called kappa and one is called lambda the lambda has two different types lambda 1 and lambda 2 you guys should make a note that this kappa and lambda they are not isotypes isotypes are only based on constant region of the heavy chain now even in our variable region the top part of variable region it's really really variable and it's also called CDR or complementarity determining reason so the name complementarity determining reason or CDR because this is the part that's going to be complement to the part in antigen so we call it CDR or it's also called hyper variable region and it's again the top part of both heavy chain and light chain so this is our basic structure of antibody the constant region it remains re relatively constant across antibodies and based on the constant we can divide antibodies into different isotypes and variable region that's the part of antibody that makes it join to or that makes the antibody go and attack antigen and we call this variable reason and we have we have potential to make approximately 10 to the power 6 different type of antibodies with different variable reason and we're going to see how that actually happens thank you for watching my video and keep watching to learn more